now we are going to organ specific markers and uh, i think there's a picture uh, you can take a picture of this uh, there are 26 organs that have specific markers now and let us go through one by one for salivary gland ductal carcinoma uh, there may be quite a number of markers but i am going to highlight only one marker that will be helpful gata 3 very nicely positive for ductal cells for small cell carcinoma what I have written NSC and CD56 is replaced by INSM1, which I will be talking in a minute. For thyroid carcinoma, it is PAX8. For medullary carcinoma thyroid, it is calcitonin. For anaplastic carcinoma, it's PAX8. Please remember, TTF can be negative. <coughs> and one more concept you have to remember. These cytoplasmic markers will be lost when the carcinoma is poorly differentiated. Whereas the nuclear markers will be positive irrespective of the differential for example here thyroglobulin is a cytoplasmic marker it is negative in anaplastic carcinoma which is a very poorly differentiated thyroid malignancy whereas pax8 is a nuclear marker it will be present in well differentiated carcinomas as well as in undifferentiated and anaplastic carcinomas that concept you have to remember for parathyroid parathormone is the marker and for thymic carcinoma p63 but now GATA3, remember this GATA3 here in ductal carcinoma of the salivary gland, that will be positive in thymic carcinoma. Salivary gland, lot of molecular uh, changes are happening and uh, luckily we have each molecular uh, event is having a marker for that. For adenoid cystic carcinoma, it is MOIB, mucoepidermide, MAML2, Asnar cell carcinoma, NR4A3, secretory carcinoma, STAT5A, myopithelial carcinoma or myopithelioma P63 and the pleomorphic adenoma, pleomorphic adenoma gene 1, otherwise known as PLAG1. And uh, as I told you, thymic carcinoma it can be positive for GATA3. And this is nice example, salivary duct carcinoma. The other way to remember salivary duct carcinoma, when you see DCIS in the uh, salivary gland, that is salivary duct carcinoma. It will have a central comedonecrosis followed by high grade uh, tumor cells. And these high grade tumor cells will be GATA3 positive. And this is the tumor where it is nicely nuclear positivity for MOIB. And you can see the spaces that these are all hyaline like material on H and E. So this is a adenoid cystic carcinoma. Here P63 in this tumor, you see only P63 positive in all the tumor cells, okay. All the tumor cells are positive for P63 and the new cousin of this P63 is P40, okay. You can do either P40 or P63, P40 is better to do it and the, it indicates the myoepithelial origin. So this is a myoepithelioma. Whereas in the tumor here, you can see nicely positive cells as well as negative cells. So this is uh, adenomyoepithelial tumor, the otherwise known as epithelial myoepithelial carcinoma in the salivary gland and adenomyoepithelial tumor in the breast. Both are the same. So here you can see two population of these cells. Uh, Asinar cell carcinoma will have a lot of lymphoid cells in the background and they will be very nicely positive for NR4A3. See the nuclear marker. And one more point, whenever you see a tumor with a lot of lymphoid cells, you have to remember PD-1 and PDL one which I will be talking. Any tumor that have lymphoid cells in the background, imagine the PD-1 and PDL one And this is a secretory carcinoma on H&E and which is nicely positive for uh, STAT-5A. This is a thyroid papillary carcinoma. See how the nuclear marker uh, nicely positive, PAX8 positive for thyroid carcinoma. And thymic carcinoma again PAX8 and P63, P40 and GATA3 will be positive. I love the nuclear markers because there is no question whether it is positive or negative. If you think whether the marker is positive or negative in a nuclear marker, it is negative. It's very easy to interpret the nuclear markers, whereas it is very tough to uh, interpret the cytoplasmic markers. So whenever uh, for a particular organ, for example, thyroid, thyroglobulin and the PAX8 is uh, available. But uh, see, in India, we are uh, very resource limited setup. Please go for nuclear markers whenever it is available. 
and as I told you, you have to remember nuclear marker will be positive despite the degree of differentiation. Even if it is undifferentiated, mu nuclear marker should be positive. For lung, you all know adenocarcinoma TTF1 and the napsin. Okay, that's another important marker you have to remember. For mucinous carcinoma, it is CDX2 for uh, and it will be negative for TTF1 that you have to remember. And remember the CDX2, it will be positive in all mucinous tumors. If there is a mucinous carcinoma from the ovary mets to the lung, it will be positive for CDX2. So clinical history is very, very important. For uh, squamous cell carcinoma, P40 will be positive. For small cell carcinoma, we have a new marker now, POW2F3, POU. Remember, wow, so this is POW, okay. POU2F3 that will be positive in small cell carcinoma. For breast, again it is GATA3. For myoepithelioma, we talk about WT1 and calretinin. These are all myoepithelial cell origin. There is a specific marker now for malignant myoepithelial cells. We will see it in a minute. And for breast cancer, now we have a very good marker that will be positive in malignant breast lesions, okay. TRPS1 trichorhinopharyngeal syndrome type 1 okay this is a new marker you have to remember it is a nuclear marker i will be talking about lot of new markers this uh, ihc is fascinating we have a very nice uh, set of markers most of them are nuclear and uh, i think you all have to remember that as I told you, this WT1 is positive in malignant myopithelial cell as well as reactive myopithelial cells. But see the BAP1. That BAP1 is lost in malignant myopithelial cells, whereas it will be present in reactive myopithelial cells. In this picture, you can see the myopithelioma of cell block from a pleural effusion. You can see the nice malignant cells and uh, clusters of benign cells here. And these benign cells are showing the BAP1 positivity, whereas these malignant cells, it is, they are all gone. And these negative BAP tumors are known as BAPomas. We will see it in a minute. So please remember BAP loss in uh, malignant mesothelial cell. So this is CLN, TTF1 for adenocarcinoma. It is a nuclear marker, napsin is a cytoplasmic marker, P63 or P40 for squamous cell carcinoma and POW2F3 for <coughs> small cell carcinoma. This is mesoepithelioma, chyle retinin and WT1, uh, but remember BAP, loss of BAP for mesothelioma. For breast, GATA3, nice nuclear marker, mammoglobin, cytoplasmic marker, but remember the new marker, TRPS1, which is a nuclear marker, okay. And coming to the esophagus, it is CDH17, for stomach also CDH17, for both are adenocarcinoma. Squamous cell carcinoma, the esophagus will be positive again for P40. For appendix and colon, SATB2, SATB2 will be nicely positive in the nucleus. For small bowel, it is villain, okay. But you all know small bowel adenocarcinoma is very, very rare. And please remember that SATB2 will be positive in osteoid and osteosarcoma also. But I am just mentioning it, you cannot confuse osteosarcoma from uh, to the adenocarcinoma of the colon or appendix, okay. Just uh, for you to remember, SADP2 is positive as well as in the osteoblast and osteoid producing lesions. This is nice CDX2 positive <coughs> in the adenocarcinoma of the colon. Previously, we thought it is CDX2 is very specific for colon uh, cancer. But now any mucin secreting tumor can be CDX2 positive. Remember I showed you a picture of adenocarcinoma of the lung that is CDX2 positive. Bavarian mucinous tumor will be CDX2 positive. Pancreatic mucinous tumor will be CDX2 positive. Nice nuclear positivity for SADB2 and nice cytoplasmic positivity for CDH17 in colon cancer. Liver, I told you glypicon 3 uh, is a marker for malignant hepatocytes. For pancreas, it is mapsin and for adrenal, it is steroidogenic factor 1. For pheochromocytoma, uh, we used to do synaptophysin chromogranin for the neuroendocrine cells and S100 for the uh, sustained ocular cells. But please believe me now, uh, the GATA3 is positive in pheochromocytoma. 
So this is the arginase and glypican and pay more attention to glypican. See the background benign hepatocytes are negative whereas malignant hepatocellular carcinoma cells are positive. This is maps in for pancreatic adenocarcinoma and this is nice nuclear marker of uh, uh, SF1 for adrenal cortical tumor. <coughs> Kidney, when we trained, there's only one tumor, clear cell carcinoma of the kidney. But now it is getting more, more and more uh, interesting. We get a lot of uh, types of the kidney. But uh, the marker you have to remember is PAX8 and uh, VHL1. Any clear cell tumor, please do the VHLG. For, for example, uh, um, what is the VHL component, RCC. Uh, cerebral hemangioblastoma, endolymphatic carcinomas, they are all positive for VHL. Any clear cell tumor, VHL may be positive, PAX8 will be positive in RCC. For bladder, it is GATA3 and for prostate, we have a very nice nuclear marker, NKX3.1. For renal cell tumor, I told there are a lot of uh, types and uh, Sandhya Madam will be highlighting it. But please remember if we use uh, four markers, CK7, uh, carbonic anhydrase 9, CKT or AMCOR and uh, hepatocyte nuclear factor 1 beta or cathepsin K. Uh, I told you the CK7 and 20 will be negative in classic uh, clear cell carcinoma of the kidney uh, in addition to oncocytoma and uh, translocation associated tumor. So cytokeratin will be negative. I will just uh, concentrate in this area. So, when you do carbonic anhydrase 9, it will be positive in uh, clear cell carcinoma, negative in oncocytoma and uh, MIT. In uh, AMCAR or uh, AMCAR will be positive in translocation associated tumors and negative in oncocytomas. Cathepsin K will be positive in translocation associated tumors and negative in oncocytoma. Please remember this table to subclassify uh, the renal cell carcinomas. One thing I have to tell you, the papillary renal cell carcinoma type 1 and type 2, now it is being clubbed as one type in the recent WHO. Keep it in mind. So this is the urothelial carcinoma, GATA3 positive, prostatic carcinoma, NKX3.1 positive. Please remember PSA, PAP, they are all gone. Okay, NKX3.1 is the new marker for the prostate. For endosovics, PAX8, PAX8 is a Mullerian epithelial origin will be positive. So endometrium will be positive. Serous tumors of the ovary will be positive in addition to WT1. The clear cell carcinoma, again remember the VHL gene I mentioned in the kidney, it will be positive. And napsin will be for unknown reasons, napsin will be positive there. Granulosa cell tumor is like uh, Kamala Hassan in Tasavadaram. It will be positive for many markers. I will show them in a minute. But FOXL2 is a very specific marker for granulosa thica cell tumor. <coughs> we are seeing the endocervical lesions. Uh, KI67 along with P16 play a very vital role. And P16 should be block positive like this, not like this. Okay, it will be block positive, both nuclear and cytoplasmic, densely positive in carcinomas. And KI67, it should be uh, very much increased in dysplastic lesions okay that uh, ki67 and p16 that pattern is very very important to differentiate uh, atypical lesions and uh, carcinomas or dysplasias granulosa cell tumor i told they will be positive for many markers and uh, fox l2 is a nice nuclear marker the other markers are inhibin calretinin sf1 wt1 and cytokeratin but please remember these things only for the exam. For practical purpose, uh, do FOXL2 and you can see the uh, granulosa cell tumor. Merkel cell carcinoma, I already told you, Merkel cell polyoma virus. Previously, we used to say CK20 dot like positivity. For neuroendocrine carcinoma, you have to remember INSM1. Femur cell carcinoma, P40. Germ cell tumors, ACT4 and SAL4. But uh, we will see a nice table for germ cell tumor uh, in the next slide. This is small cell carcinoma, whether it is from the lung, pancreas, cervix, stomach, any organ, small cell carcinoma will be positive for INSM1. Nice nuclear positivity, okay. And uh, the other marker for small cell carcinoma is POW, POU. So IHC in germ cell tumors, there are some classic markers, pluripotent markers and somatic markers, okay. For germinoma, uh, OCT4, 
please remember OCT4. We want to see that. For yolk sac tumor, SAL4. For embryonal carcinoma, SOX2 and CD30. For chorio carcinoma, you all know HCG, but the new marker is GATA3 and P40. And for immature teratoma, SAL4 and KI67. Okay, please. Uh, and uh, you all know the spermatocytic tumor is uh, uh, well away from these uh, germinomas. Previously, it is called spermatocytic seminoma, but that word seminoma is replaced by tumor and it has a specific marker DMRT1. And please remember post chemotherapy, these markers may be lost. In any post chemo or post radiation patients, please interpret the IHC carefully. So this is a composite picture for uh, germ cell tumors, PLAP or CD117 and SAL4 positive in germinoma or disgerminoma or seminoma, AE13, CD30 and SOX2 positive in embryonal carcinoma. Glypican 3 is a new marker for uh, yolk sac tumor and the old marker is alpha phytoprotein. HCG is a old marker for uh, choriocarcinoma and inhibin is also relatively new but the newest marker is the GATA3. Differential diagnosis of small blue cell tumor. These are all the five major uh, types, okay. Neuroendocrine tumors, lymphoid or myeloid tumors, melanocytic tumors, uh, spindle cell tumors and others. These are all the broad differential diagnosis. Neuroendocrine tumor, small cell carcinoma, INSM1. Lymphoma, LCA and uh, for myeloma, it is MPO and CD117. For melanoma, it is SOX10, okay. Previously, we used to do HMP45 or S100, but now SOX10 is more specific for melanoma. For small uh, blue cell sarcomas, it's a good number of DDs, Ewing's, CAC rearranged sarcomas, round cell sarcoma, EWSR1, non-ETS, sarcoma with bicor alterations. Uh, and these four are the family of the Ewing's tumor. There is some problem in the Ewing's family. So members are coming out of uh, uh, the family and we are, right now we have four members. For rhabdomyosarcoma, it is myogenin or desmin and for desmoplastic small round cell tumor, it is the most confused tumor. It will be taking positive for epithelium, positive for skeletal muscle, positive for mesothelium, positive for neuroendocrine tumors. So I used to call them exam going tumors. They are confused. In the other categories is the STC neuroblastoma, neuroblastoma, medulloblastoma and Merkel cell carcinoma. We know for Merkel cell carcinoma, it is Merkel cell polyoma virus. For medulloblastoma, NSA and synaptopoiesin. And we have a new marker for neuroblastoma, which is a nuclear marker. By the way, whenever you see two, even in my notes, these are all in my notes. It's a nuclear marker. Whenever you see one, it is a cytoplasmic marker. For uh, neuroblastoma, we have uh, PXOX2B, POX 2B, okay, nuclear, nice nuclear marker. Here there is a tumor, this doesn't need uh, any ISC. You see a lot of desmoplasia and nests of small blue cell. So this is desmoplastic small round blue cell tumor and that's positive for uh, NSC, which is a neuroendocrine marker, cytokeratin, desmin and WT1. So the diagnosis is desmoplastic small round cell tumor. This mainly for the differential diagnosis of small blue cell tumor. Please don't forget there's a good number of differential diagnosis for small blue cell tumors. And if you remember the main classification, you can come up with the other members of the tumor. So this is a small blue cell tumor and all the, uh, you, this is a composite picture and uh, when, uh, what is the marker that uh, determines the diagnosis. If it is CD99 positive in a, like a net like pattern, fishnet pattern and the NKX 2.2 is positive, it is Ewing's. When it is desmin epithelial and neuroendocrine markers positive, it is desmoplastic small uh, cell tumor. When myogenin positive, it is a rhabdomyosarcoma. Please remember the HNE morphology may be the same. Depending upon the IHC, we make the different uh, diagnosis and we pinpoint the diagnosis.